have you learned about human trafficking in this country? Uh, believe it or not, around the world, we have 27 million people today that are in slavery, modern slavery, more than we've ever had. And so it's a problem here in our country, but it's also a problem all around the world. 26% of the cases are sexual servitude. 74% are labor, uh, people working in brick kilns, people working in rug factories, fishermen, young fishermen, 12 years old, but they're in bondage for life, and um, many people don't even know it exists. A lot of times people think they're pursuing an economic opportunity for their young son or daughter. Some cases, uh, like I saw, I know you were just in Southeast Asia and Manila, a uh, 15 year old girl, 12 year old girl, uh, lived in rural uh, Philippines area. Some man says, look, I can take you to Manila for the day, and the next thing you know, they're in sexual servitude. These are crimes of opportunity, where people are doing this to make money. If you can raise the risk to them, the risk of prosecution, then you can do a tremendous amount to curtail this activity, and that's what we want to do. What I discovered when we were in Southeast Asia, it's because the people are such hard, the victims, are such hard workers and they don't have any safety net of any kind and they right. need to feed their families. So if someone comes into the community and says, I can get you a job, right. they jump at it because they really have a good work ethic and want to make money That's for right. their families. That's right. And, uh, and in most of those cases, they end up uh, loaning the money somehow bogusly, it's, uh, or they have to pay for the opportunity to have this job. They never get out from under that. So for a lifetime. Uh, they work for no wages. They work for just getting food daily. They're locked in and uh, have no opportunity to get out. Tell me what it's like in the United States. Um, obviously, we're a, we're, a, we're a country that still has those issues. We still have work to do, for instance, in, in the supply chain. We have companies here, for instance, that don't even know they're participating in it, but they're buying goods from other places. They don't know that downstream, uh, the products that are being sold at upstream to them and made upstream and given to them, those products in many cases are made by people who are in bondage. So, well, that's, uh, well, that's the same if you go in and you buy a, a T-shirt. As, as, as a consumer, there's a really inexpensive one that's coming from Southeast Asia because slaves made it, or you can pay one where they paid, you know, paid yeah. their labor. The fish you may be eating, uh, other products, bricks. Yeah. Uh, rugs. The stories are staggering, aren't they? It's just, it's, you just can't believe when you hear them. You think that it, uh, every time I heard them, I thought this can't be true in this day and age. Mm -hmm. You have so many people who, you know, look at coming to America as that economic opportunity, the, the chance uh, to really start a new life. And they read these ads. Uh, they have these uh, recruiters, as they call them, and as it turns out, the recruiters in many places, in, in most, in many of these cases, are just people who, you know, are fronts for organized crime who end up abducting them, having them in these situations, having them work as long as they're useful to them, and then be cast aside. Senator, good luck on, on the bill um, on this, because it's obviously a very serious issue, and uh, even it's exciting that this is bipartisan, because I know that uh, both sides of the aisle really care about this, and this is a huge problem. Thank you.